acting ex-US President Donald Trump has surrendered in Georgia to be arrested on charges of plotting to overturn the 2020 election results in the southern state. Now, the Atlanta jail required him to take the first ever mugshot for a former American president. Remember, Donald Trump uh, had managed to dodge the mugshot procedure in the earlier criminal cases that he's been indicted in. At the airport on his way home, meanwhile, Trump described the case as a travesty of justice and a sad day for America. Trump has been indicted four times in just five months uh, since April. Now, Trump says that all the cases are politically motivated because he's leading the Republican race to challenge President Joe Biden, a Democrat, in next year's presidential election. Uh, the former president left New Jersey on a private jet to be booked uh, into the Fulton County Jail. He was inside jail for around 20 minutes and outside jail there were Trump supporters with American flags. And this also has wide-ranging political ramifications because, as I said, well, Trump is still the front-runner as far as the Republican race is concerned and he will be juggling election uh, campaigning and trial dates uh, next year as the Republican uh, uh, campaign begins in January for the November 2024 elections. But here's what Trump said after his surrender. What has taken place here is a travesty of justice. We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. And everybody knows it. I've never had such support. And that goes with the other ones, too. What they're doing is election interference. They're trying to interfere with an election. There's never been anything like it in our country. And we have every right, every single right, to challenge an election that we think is dishonest, that we think it's very dishonest. And well, what really was the situation on the ground? There were Trump supporters outside the jail. And what are the political ramifications of Trump's surrender? He still continues to be the front runner. And what really were the major takeaways? Uh, because uh, the booking process yielded many historic firsts. Well, Celia Mendoza of Voice of America reports from outside the county jail in Atlanta. What we have seen here in the ground is people that early in the morning showed up to the surroundings of the uh, county jail. They were with signs, uh, some supporting Donald Trump's, others against him. And this mugshot was something that was talked about for weeks. We didn't know exactly if this was actually going to take place. But today it was confirmed by the chief of the police that this was going to happen because they want to send a signal that the president and everybody else indicted are not above the law and also there as the other people that always come here to the jail to get uh, surrendered after they get indicted. Uh, we saw many of the Trump supporters uh, talking about uh, the charges and they agree with the former president that they believe that this is politically motivated. However, some others believe that Donald Trump did commit the crimes that he's accused of. Uh, but we have to remember that in the United States, um, you're innocent until, until proven guilty. And that's the process that it starts right now. Donald Trump was left uh, on the conditional freedom. Uh, this is a bill of $200,000 that he agreed with the DA's office and he will continue his political campaign uh, but we cannot forget that this is as you mentioned the first time that a former president of the united states not only gets surrendered to a jail but also gets a mock shot taken and that is something that we can definitely um, mark in the history books in the united states and his um, image is one telling of the feelings that he has about this process Right now, he actually has a very busy calendar between uh, the legal issues. We actually have next Monday, August 28th, and next hearing in Washington, D.C., where uh, the judge, Tanya Chalkin, will decide when the trial in that district will start. Remember, that has to do with the interference on the elections and the four charges presented by Jack Smith who is the special uh, counsel that was assigned to the case and, and is actually a federal charges. Uh, and they are trying to do it by, to the beginning of the year. And then we also have the trial that is going to start next year in Miami because of the um, classified documents. And we know now that in New York, a judge has approved that cameras could be allowed inside the courtroom. We know that he's facing charges there as well. And all of this presents a lot of... Um, different uh, 
thinks that he has to now marry with the fact that he has a campaign to run. He has to keep going to different states, and that's something that he's doing. Politically, we have seen that the Republican base and those that voted for Donald Trump do not change their mind about what is happening. They will vote for him. He is the front runner. He is possibly who is going to win the primary election within the Republican Party. We saw it uh, within the past few hours. They had a debate. He did not participate. He actually um, had an interview that was posted in social media and had over a hundred million views. Um, and then and the other side is what happens in a general election. These four cases will be fundamental for voters, especially independent voters. And the case here in Georgia is one of the most consequential. Um, understanding that he cannot get a pardon if he is um, convicted for the charges. He has 13 charges in this jurisdiction, and one of those has to do with racketeering. That means that anyone that gets convicted for racketeering within the Georgia law has a minimum of jail of five years, and a judge cannot change it, and it cannot be pardoned. And the process to pardon someone within the local system is extremely difficult, and that will be something that will be challenging for president, but also for voters, and eventually for the party if we get to a general election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. We saw how the former president on the three indictments prior was told when he had to go to the court, which day and which hour. In this case, he had the opportunity to decide when he will surrender. It was 24 hours, seven days a week open, and he decided to do it today, a day after the debate, but also within prime time. Every single network in the United States and around the world were paying attention not only to, to his every move, but also what he was going to say, how the process was going to work, uh, the motorcade that came to the jail, and also if the police was going to finally do the mugshot. And that mugshot probably will be now used by his supporters to try to gain um what they believe is respect for the former president. We know that the campaign has also made money in the past with that.